Hi, my name is Erica Manette Vargas, and for my independent project, I studied bacteria growth on masks after a single use. Reason behind the project. We are currently facing a global pandemic due to the coronavirus. In efforts to prevent the coronavirus from spreading, regulations have been placed to wear masks in public places and in small gatherings. As a student myself, I was interested in how often we should be washing our masks. According to the CDC, the coronavirus is spread through respiratory droplets or small particles. If a person with COVID-19 were to talk, cough, breathe, or sneeze without wearing a mask, they can possibly spread the virus to other individuals. This is why wearing a mask is important. Additionally, washing your mask is equally important. Since masks are helped to prevent the spread of the virus, they should be washed regularly because the bacteria can harbor on the outside. This project shows the importance of washing masks after a single use. Before starting my experiment, I conducted my own survey to see how often people wash their mask. From the results, I found that most people wash their masks after a single use. However, not everyone did. Out of the 15 responses, 40% said that they washed their mask after a single use, 26.7% said that they washed their mask every 2-3 to three days, 13.3% said that they washed their mask every 4-6 to six days, 13.3% said that they washed their mask once a week, and 67 said that they washed their mask every 3 weeks, and 0% said never. Before doing this experiment, I researched and found several sources in why washing masks after every use is important. The first study I found was microbial contamination on used surgical masks among hospital personnel and microbial air quality in their working wards, a hospital of Bangkok. In the study, they measured the bacteria and fungi by counting how many appeared over time. After collecting the data, the researchers found that the amount of bacteria and fungi present on masks was highly significant and that there was more bacteria and fungi on masks that were worn outside. This shows that depending on the environment, the amount of microbes can vary. Also, the study of bacteria and fungi growth shows that masks can in fact harbor bacteria growth and it is important to wash them daily. In the second study, contamination and washing of cloth masks and risk of infection among healthcare workers in Vietnam, researchers studied the different methods of washing masks. Specifically, they compared self-washed masks with masks that have been washed in hospital laundry. They found that with the rhinovirus, the risk of infection was more than double for healthcare workers that self-washed their masks, compared with masks that were cleaned through hospital laundry. They state that the preferred method would be washing masks in the washing machine with warm water to remove unwanted bacteria. They conclude that with proper washing of masks, cloth masks can be just as protective as a medical mask. Both of these studies show that bacteria can live on the outside surfaces of an individual's mask. The studies both emphasize the importance that masks should be washed properly to prevent this possible spread of bacteria and viruses. The CDC recommends washing masks once they get dirty, or at least daily. Also, if they are disposable, they should be used only once and thrown away. The objective of the experiment the purpose of this experiment is to determine the amount of bacteria present on used masks after a single use. Although we cannot see the bacteria on our masks through the naked eye, we can see this bacteria form on petri dishes. This experiment shows just how important it is to wash our masks regularly. The hypothesis in this experiment was if a clean, unused mask is supposed to have little to no bacteria on the outside surface, then a single used mask should have significantly more bacteria due to the presence of diverse microbes in the environment. In this experiment, an unused mask was used as the control variable, and it was compared to six used masks that were used in different environments, two to be exact. Collecting the data. The data was collected over a week. In this experiment, the masks were used in two locations one in the grocery store, and one on campus. There were a total of six surgical masks that were collected, three in the grocery store and three on campus. A single use was defined as two hours. It was defined as two hours in this experiment because I would stay on campus for about two hours for my two in-person classes. I would also try to stay in the store about two hours to keep everything the same. After each mask was used, it was labeled with the date 
place in trial number and place in a clean plastic bag to prevent any cross-contamination. Once all the masks were collected in this experiment, the bacteria on the outside of the mask were transferred onto the prospective Petri dish. While I was starting this experiment, I prepped the working area by using 70% isopropyl alcohol. I also used a wet cotton swab on the surface of the mask in order to get the most bacteria out of it. The cotton swabs were changed after each mask and each Petri dish transfer. My hands were also sterilized to prevent any cross-contamination from occurring. To get quantitative data for this experiment, the number of bacteria on each Petri dish will be counted and analyzed through bar graphs produced through Excel. The numerical data for this bacteria on each Petri dish will allow us to see just how dirty a mask can get after a single use, and will ultimately show us the importance of washing masks after each use. The image on the left side of the slide shows six used masks that were collected in the control, which was an unused mask. On the right of the unused mask are the masks used in the grocery store. Trial 1 is on the bottom, trial 2 is in the middle, and trial 3 is on the top. The same order goes for the masks that were collected on campus, which is also to the right of the grocery store. The image on the right side of the slide shows my setup for this experiment. In this picture, there is a box wrapped in tinfoil for incubation, seven masks, seven petri dishes, and 70% isopropyl alcohol to clean the working area. Not pictured is the light that was used to generate the bacteria. Results. For this experiment, I wanted to document the bacteria growth for the five days of incubation. As stated in the previous slide, the order is the exact same. The control is on the far left, the grocery store trials are in the middle, and the campus trials are on the right. There is the most growth on trial 2 on campus, however, there is also bacteria growth on the other P2 dishes. It just may be hard to see from the photos that were taken. These are the images of the P2 dishes from day 4 and 5 of incubation. For the final day on day 5, there are some petri dishes with little bacteria growth. However, there is a lot of bacteria growth on trials 1 and 2 of the petri dishes from the masks used on campus. In order to quantitatively analyze the bacteria growths on the petri dish, I hand counted the number of growths on the petri dishes. To get the most accurate number of growths, I sectioned each petri dish by 4 and counted section by section. I tried to include both small and big bacteria growths. Overall, when looking at the data, the most bacteria growth were on trials 2 and 3 from the mask on campus, and there were relatively less bacteria growths on the other trials for both in the grocery store and on campus. Conclusion: There was a bacteria growth on the control variable after 5 days. Specifically, there were 6 countable bacteria growths on the dish. For the grocery store, trial 1 and trial 2 did not have much growth. However, trial 3 had the most bacteria growth out of the three grocery trials at 13 bacteria growths. For campus, trial 2 had the most growths out of the three trials at about 223 bacteria growths. Trial 3 had the second most at 175, and trial 1 had the least amount of bacteria growths. Overall, the petri dishes with the most bacteria were trials 2 and 3 on campus at about 223 and 175 countable bacteria growths, respectively. Overall, we would have to reject the hypothesis that there is significantly more bacteria on the masks that are used than on the unused mask. Trial 1 on campus, trial 1 in the grocery store, and trial 2 in the grocery store had less bacteria growth than the control. This means that half of the mask had less bacteria growths than the control. And this could be attributed to a flaw in the experiment that I did not account for. However, all the masks that were collected still had visible bacteria growth. Although we had to reject the hypothesis in this experiment, there was visible bacteria growth on every mask collected. Since the data that was collected was after a single use, the experiment still shows that it is important to continue to wash our masks after each use to prevent the bacteria from building up. 
After cleaning your mask every day, it is also important to store your clean mask in a clean area or bag to prevent bacteria from attaching to the inside and outside surfaces of the mask. When thinking back to this experiment, I was thinking about the control variable. Although it was an unused mask, it could have made contact with a surface that had some bacteria on it, making the petri dish have bacteria, more bacteria than the other trials in this experiment. Overall, this experiment was effective in showing just how much bacteria can come from wearing a mask after one use. By testing two places, on campus and in the grocery store, we can see how the environment may affect how much bacteria is generated on the outside of the mask. For instance, there might have been more bacteria on the mask used on campus because when I was on campus, I would have to be in contact with more people and have to talk to my classmates and professors. However, when I was on the, in the grocery store, I didn't have to interact with as many people. But I would have to create another experiment to test this theory out. For this particular experiment, some of the petri dishes didn't grow as much as bacteria as I would have liked, therefore causing some discrepancies within the data. However, if more time and resources were available, I would have more trials and more places to test the mask after a single use. I would also be curious to collect masks that have not been washed after a single use and see how much bacteria harbors on the outside of those masks. Thank you for listening to my independent project. If you have any questions about this experiment, please feel free to contact me at fargusem one at Have a good day.